Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. And has raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I repeat. And has made us to sit together. Note it. And has made us to sit together and made us, note the word, and raised us up to sit together with Christ in heavenly places. I want to let you know that you have a position. So I want to look at this word, take your place. One worst thing that can happen to anyone, the worst thing that can happen is to be some, for someone to be out of place. When you are displaced, means it's over. But the scripture here says, he made us to sit together with him. In this Easter period, for instance, what is the purpose of Jesus dying for man? Why would Jesus need to take, through, take those pains, those agony? Why would Jesus need to die? He died because he came to pick us up together with him. Please note this word. That does not mean we are not walking on earth. Please understand it. He made us to sit together with him. So the, the, the Jesus Christ dying and rising is to pick us up together with him. But guess what? That does not mean we are not walking on earth. We go to school on earth, we go to market on earth, we eat on earth, we play on earth, we drive cars on earth. But guess what it means? Our mentality is not on earth. Made us to sit together with him in heavenly places. Now let me say this again. When we talk about heavenly places, there are three heavens basically. When Apostle um, 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 began to reveal it to us. So we realized that there are three heavens. We have the first heaven, we have the second heaven, and of course we have the third heaven. In the first heaven, of course, that is where the little, little principalities and all and all lived. Or they live. Then there's the second heaven. Where the demons, the demonic world, the demonic forces of this world, they take decision on behalf of mankind. You are seeing what is happening today. Let me tell you, it's not cooked on earth. It was cooked somewhere. So they live in the second heavens. Then in the third heaven, where Apostle Paul says he was caught up and he saw things that were unspeakable. That is where God lived. In the third heaven above all. I can prove it. You remember when God immediately wanted to be to respond to Daniel's prayer. The Bible said there were angels that stopped. That means between where the blessing was coming from, there was this, what I call satanic roadblock on the second heaven that trying to stop the blessings from getting to Daniel. But guess what? There was a reinforcement again from the third heaven. Now, he has made us to sit together with him. So it means, ladies and gentlemen, if you know where you are operating from, you'll be, you know, you have a, you will have a kind of boldness that others don't have. I want to ask, what makes a policeman, a soldier man, or a policeman come to you boldly and tell you you are under arrest? And he begins to drag you. Sometimes you may be more powerful physically than the policeman, but he's dragging you out. You know why? Because he has where he's been backed up. And so by the time you try to fight with him, you know what happened? You are not fighting with that man. You are fighting with where he's operating from. The power backing him up. That is exactly what we are saying. For Christ had made us to sit together with him in heavenly places. And so when you are there, we have our language. When you are operating there, we have our behavioral pattern. When you are operating there, we have our belief system. So it means that when others are afraid, we are not afraid because we live on earth, but our mentality and our reality is not on earth. We are talking about coronavirus right now. The fear of coronavirus has killed some people even before the disease. 
You know why? Because their mentality is operating on earth. So what stops people on earth, we also stop them. At this hour, to all of you hearing me, I want you to understand, he had made us to sit. Why will Christ come and die? Why will Christ leave his, 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 his heavenly realm, that blissful place, and come in on earth to hang, to be hung and to be punished by man, to be killed by man, and to be nailed to the cross? Why will he go through such agony? Why he came so that he can pick us up together with him. I can give you scriptures, I'll get off your way. Let me give you some few Revelations and New Jets. Now, if you look at the book of John chapter 11, you will see a young man called Lazarus. The Bible says he was sick. Not quite long, they sent to Jesus. Then Jesus, before Jesus will get to where he was, he took four days. And within those days, four days, he had already died. And of course, Jesus said again that this sickness is not unto death. And so the enemy wanted to make God a liar. So they, they allowed Lazarus to die. And when Jesus will get there, there was something I saw that I need all of us to look at. When Jesus will finally um, tell the disciples that, um, let's go and wait, Lazarus is dead. He said something in John 4, um, 11, 15. He said, I am glad for your sake that I was not there. So you can see, the exit of Jesus in Lazarus' life made the enemy to be able to um, attack him, not only to attack him, also to kill him. He said, I am glad. John eleven fifteen precisely. John 11, he said, I am glad for your sake that I was not there. That means if Jesus was there, nothing will touch Lazarus. Lazarus could not have died if Jesus was there. I can still prove it. Now, when Lazarus was raised from the dead, I'm talking about heavenly places now. When he was raised from the dead, you know all the, know the story. That's not where I'm going. In chapter 12, there was a thanksgiving. Lazarus began to appreciate God. Now, in that thanksgiving, we are told in chapter 12, verse 9, I believe verse 9 to 11, that there were many Jews that came. They came not to see Jesus alone, that they might see Lazarus who was dead, that they might put him to death again, that they might kill him again. They could not succeed. You know why? The position of Lazarus has already changed. Yesterday, you were able to kill him because Jesus was not there. You were able to attack him because Jesus was absent. But this time, Jesus present in his life, which I call the heavenly places, they came, they failed. That is why I know coronavirus must fail. That is why I know the power that is against the church must fail. That is why I know no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Let me tell you, the enemy has failed already. That is the truth. The enemy has failed already. I call this one big mistake. Big mistake because it gives us opportunity for momentum. It gives us opportunity for us to recoup again. I'm telling you this year. So many have already burned out already. But these few days and whatever, I can tell you, I call it retreats. I call it Operation Retreat. Operation where you have to gather momentum. Ladies and gentlemen, he said, I was glad that I was not there. Lazarus died. But now that he's there, guess what? They came that they should kill Lazarus again. They could not succeed. Lazarus could not be killed again because this time he is no longer sitting in the natural realm that he used to be where you met him. He had changed his position to heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That is where I'm looking at today. We're going to go a little bit further because I want to be very, very fast. In 2 Kings chapter 1, 2 Kings chapter 1, you're going to see a scenario of King Ahaziah. King Ahaziah was sick from verse 1. He was sick. And now, guess what he did? He said, he said they should go and bring Elijah. Let them bring in Elijah, he said. I, I need to bring in Elijah. But guess what? Why before the soldiers, he sent 51 soldiers to go and arrest Elijah. But before they will come, Elijah had changed his position to be on a hill, on a mountain. And these soldiers suddenly got there. The ability to climb mountains was removed from them. Because why? When God puts you in a position, no power can climb and bring you down. And you know what they did? They began to beg Elijah to come down. 51 soldiers suddenly began to beg one man of God. Man of God, we want you to come down. The king said you should come down. And Elijah said, if I be a man of God. In other words, you didn't put me where I am. You can't bring me down. You didn't promote me to this level. You can't bring me down. You didn't elevate me to this level. You can't bring me down. I am not coming down. If I be a man of God, he said, let fire come. And you know what? Fire fell. We saw 
a scenario where all these soldiers were consumed by fire because they lack ability to climb to the realm that Elijah was. I call that a type of or a typology of heavenly places. Now, if in the Old Testament, soldiers could not climb to where Elijah was, think of the position that Christ has put us now. No longer on a physical mountain. There's a position we are that is even higher than that mountain where Elijah was. Let me tell you this here. Because why? That I say Christ in me is the hope of my glory. The power that is holding us, eyes cannot see it. I was saying briefly today, if my power was on this cross, powers can take it. If my power was on the ring, powers can take it. And when they take it, it is over. But guess what? What is keeping us and what is helping us is what we call that power in the heavenly place where no power can get to. No power can get there. No coronavirus can get there. So now, I want to bring this topic to a, a, an end. So what am I trying to say? Guess what? In that heavenly places where Christ has taken us, we have our language. In that heavenly places where Christ has taken us, we have our behavioral pattern. In that heavenly places where Christ has taken us, we have the way we talk. We have the way we believe. So in that place, there are languages we use. In that place, we mind what we hear. In that place, we make sure, because remember, Hebrews says, in Hebrews uh, 11, from verse 1, it says, Now, faith is the substance of things offer, the evidence of things not seen. The evidence of things not seen. So, in that heavenly places, what happened? We bring the unseen to the seen. We bring the things that are not seen for people to see and appreciate God. How? Our behavioral power, a pattern. How? By commanding things and it comes to pass. Now hear me. Don't confess what others are confessing. Yes, they are talking about coronavirus. They tell you he's killing this, he's killing that. They are not going to tell you how many people he didn't kill. Because it can't touch you. We live in the heavenly realm. So we have a language. What are the languages? I will teach us now. What are the languages? Don't forget this here. When you look at um, Revelation chapter 12 verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And the words of their testimony. That was the testimony. The heavenly language. The language we speak in that realm. The languages we speak in that realm. So you begin to have such language. Like I can't be sick. I can't be down. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I am waxing stronger. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not the next. I am a lender and not a borrower. The enemy cannot stop me. I am unstoppable. Those are the languages we speak in that realm. The, there's no impossibility in that realm. You know why? With God, all things are possible. So in the realm I'm talking about, which is the heavenly place that we read, in that place there's no impossibility, sir. There's no impossibility in that realm. In that realm, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Philippians 4.13 I can do all things, not some things. Philippians 4.13 I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Those are the languages we speak there. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the words of their testimony. So you begin to use your word to create your destiny. To create your platform. To create what you want to experience. Don't confess what you are going through. Confess what you want to go through. What is it you want to go through? What is it you want to experience? What is it you want to talk about? What is it you want to testify about? Use your word now in that realm where you are to create what you want. So please, note this. That in that heavenly realm, we have a type of confidence. Confidence that what stopped them in the world can't stop us. What's making them afraid can't make us afraid. You know why? Because our own mentality is not on the realm where they are. So you pick up your salvation again as you are hearing me. Pick up your position again and begin to confess things that are right. The things you want to go through. The things don't have to share evil news. Don't have to share things that will make people afraid. Don't have to share things that will break people down. Begin to see how you can be a lifting to your neighbor. Bless those you can. Like I said last time, I, we, I give God glory. I still thank God again that what is happening is happening. Because in everything, so we should give him praise. Can I tell you? Because 
If you can see what is happening now, the reason why your affection has to be in the heaven is what I'm saying. If you can see what is happening now, the roads are jammed, the roads are blocked, policemen and so their men everywhere. People can't go to markets, people can't go to office, people can't go to bank to withdraw. <laughs> so you think of how it's going to be. After the saints of God are taken and the Antichrist government have its government on earth. Oh my God, it will be so terrible. And that's the reason why we should not put our affection on earth. We live in the heavenly places. Let's put our affection there. Let's behave the way he wants us to behave. If you watch, I'm going to ask again. People have cars. They're not driving it. People have offices, they can't go. Financial institutions, they are no stiving. The system of the world seems to be failing. The wisdom of man seems to be out of place. Why, why is all this? Because I believe God is sounding the warning. God is letting us understand that we have to put our affection again. In the heavenly places where he had made us to sit with him. We just don't forget this. He made us to sit with him in the heavenly places. So take opportunity now and reorganize your life. You that have been so busy. You that have been talking about, you know, look at all kinds of things. It's not time for that. It's time for you to understand that there's a position he puts you. There's a behavioral pattern in that position. There's a belief system in that position. And there are the way we talk in that position in the heavenly places. So begin to talk kingdom language. Begin to confess kingdom things. Begin to see those you can lift, not those you can pull down. Begin to know that no matter what you are walking now, where you are now, you are going to leave it one day and have a place. Where you are going to give account of how you lived your life. Sir, we need to be fat. We need to come back to ourselves and be factual. Let's go back and begin to look at these things. What am I saying? Cars are not moving. Aeroplanes are not flying. The gas station, nobody is going there to buy gas. There's fuel, but nobody is going. The roads are blocked. Policemen and soldiers everywhere. Why? Think of how it's going to be. Think of how it's going to be after the rapture has taken place. Let me quickly talk to fathers and mothers in the Lord and uncles in the Lord and friends in the Lord and brothers in the Lord and grandfathers in the Lord. But please, can we say this here? Let me learn my word. That it's not time for us to castigate each other. It's not time for us to see error in another person's message. Let's preach our own. If you have a contrary view, say it. Just go ahead and preach yours. And that's what I think. You know why? Because Jesus looked at us one day. He said, Father, that's, I believe, in John chapter 17. He said, let them be one, just like you and I are one. That was the last prayer of Jesus Christ while he was on earth. He said, Father, that they may be one. They may be one. Just as me and you are one. I believe John 17 verse 21. You can check it. John 17 21. That they may be one. That just as me and you are one. So what is it? The enemy strives when we are divided. If you preach, I preach. Nobody preaches all. We preach in part. We prophesy in part. Anybody who says, Don't say the Lord and is lying, let it be between him and God. It's not for us to start marking the record card of each other. Looking at the eyes and the all and the dots and the English that is not right or one thing. Please don't let's go against ourselves, sir, man. Let's go and know that there's a common enemy out there. And the, the earlier we come together, the better. If anyone is preaching, if anyone comes on to say anything, then you have a contrary belief or you have what God is telling you. You say your own, but not to hit down 
on the other person's own because you don't know if it's God that told the person. That is one. And that's another thing I want to say. That we've got to come together. We've got to team up together. Let's be one. Don't let the enemy judge us. Don't let them laugh at us. We've got it too much enemies. If you watch social media, you need to hear some youths talking. People are talking against the church, against fathers. For God's sake. And because these people are talking ignorantly, you won't blame them because they don't know what we know. They don't, they talk ignorant. Many just talk anyhow. Many even believe that men of God should be the one who will build institution for them. The people selling their crude oil, the people that they voted in place that are getting all the money, they don't talk to them. No, it's men of God that should do this. We, we went to Ilupeju, um, a, a branch church a few days ago. I went giving out food. We gave out food. We gave out money. We are giving money to people to eat. We are giving out food. Now, where is the government? I don't want to go into that. But guess what? Let a pastor uh, just fat. It will be announced as if he's the only one who fats. Let something just have you hear everybody. Oh, man of God this. Man of God that. Man of God, this. Someone came up last time. Labishi, man of God. Hey, the open church. When another um, um, institution somewhere uh, bombed down a police station, nobody, the same journalist did not come up to talk. I read it in Punch newspaper. They didn't come up to say anything. When they bombed down well, another institution or another religion, bombed down a police station, nobody talked. But no, no pastor had bombed down a police station. So the point I'm trying to say, you can see, the common enemy is strong. They're out there. We've got to come together. It's not time for us to tear ourselves apart. Don't forget, we prophesy in parts. Eh? Don't forget that here. We prophesy in part. We preach in parts. Nobody preaches all. The only person that preached all and did not live to see the next day was Stephen in the Bible. You remember? He preached from Genesis to Revelation. When there was nothing to preach, they stoned him and he died. So nobody preaches all. We just preach in part, prophesy in part, and live it the way it is. As I'm talking now, you may have a contrary view. But I'm just preaching what God is leading me to preach. So if you have one, preach yours. Don't let's start antagonizing each other. Just understand there's a common enemy, and that enemy is going down. I want to say my name is Steve, Reverend Ben Eradbai, the Jesus soldier, y'all. I, I just want to spend this time to pray with us. That whatever is called coronavirus is going down in the name of Jesus. From this same realm where we are in the heavenly places, we come against every contrary power. In this second heaven, in the first heaven, anywhere they are on earth, we command their kingdom to close down in the name of Jesus. We command confusion in their camp in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, let the enemy of the cross go under. We plead the blood of Jesus against them right now. Right now in your homes, wherever you are, I speak peace. I speak peace. I speak restoration. If you are sick, receive your healing now. From this realm, in the heavenly realm, where Christ has put me and he has put you, that is born again. We hereby decree that the kingdom of the enemy has expired. We declare that coronavirus has expired. We declare that things are back in normal place. We declare that institutions are striving again. We declare that the knowledge of God is filling the earth. In the mighty name of Jesus, we decree revival. We declare revival. We decree revival in the mighty name of Jesus. And we speak peace to your home. We speak restoration to your home. We speak deliverance to you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we speak peace to you. We say it is well with you. When you go out, it is well. When you come in, it is well. Don't forget this child of God. We are seated with him in heavenly places. Please let me hear you shout where you are. Say no shaking. Tell yourself no shaking. You know why? We are walking on earth, but we are not on earth. Because our mentality, our reality, and everything that has to do with us is not on earth. So the enemy cannot come there to attack that thing. Because God has it covered. Don't forget Psalm 91 again. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Messiah shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. There's hope that we have that the world system don't have. So don't sell your hope. Don't sell your peace. Don't sell your joy. If you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, see bow your heads where you are there and say with me, say, dear Jesus, I surrender my life to you. Have mercy on me. From now onward, I will serve you all the days of my life. 
thank you for forgiving my sins. From now onward, I hereby declare with my mouth that I'm born again, that all things have passed away in Jesus' name. Amen. And like I said again, my name is still Reverend Ben Eragbai, the Jesus soldier. Let me let you know I love you from the bottom of my heart, but Jesus loves you more. Keep rising again in Jesus' name. Amen.